Hello all, welcome back. In this session, we are going to understand the statelessness behavior of HTTP protocol. Okay, quite opposite to this is a TCP protocol. It will follow stateful nature. So what does it mean by statelessness or statefulness? And which one is good for us? So of course, we are using HTTP and stateless nature and we are going to implement JWT, right? So in the last two sessions, I have given simple introduction here and here I've explained what is the difference between authentication and authorization. I know still you have lots of questions and doubts. Don't worry. So by end of this uh, discussion, um, maybe it will take two more or three videos to understand clearly, but I will connect all the dots so that by the end you will understand it clear means clearly. So here first understand like what is the statelessness of HTTP protocol and what does it mean statefulness in TCP protocol. So if you understand this fundamental thing, then you will understand the importance of using session based authorization or importance of JWT token based authorization. So, okay. So here, okay, I'm just taking help of a pain. So in a, any web application or you can consider e-commerce web application or you can take any bank application. Suppose bank application, if you uh, go to the login screen, if you, you will enter user ID and password and if you click on submit button, okay, then if user ID and password is correct, uh, you will get an access to go to the home page and you will do all the transaction. But what is happening inside, okay? That's what we are going to understand. So before that, before that, first we should understand what is the statelessness behavior of HTTP. So here statelessness means, okay, maybe you will get a lot of confusion here. Don't worry. I will try to make it simple. So what does it mean by stateless means? This HTTP, this HTTP, either request or response, this HTTP protocol, okay, normally whenever you click on sign in button, Okay, we are sending a HTTP request to the server, right? So this HTTP protocol will take um, the client request to the server and the server will validate whether user ID and password is correct or not. Okay, that is called authorization, sorry, authentication, right? What That's what we understand as the last session. So here, once it is validated and immediately it will send a response to the client immediately it will send a response to the client that whether it is a valid uh, user or if it is not a valid user it will send a response like a uh, 401 unauthorized or like a user not found something okay that means error message okay after that what will happen this http request http response is not going to store any information about the client on the server or at the same time any information about the server on the client okay what i'm saying i will repeat one more time this http request and response that means which is following the http protocol is not going to store any information about the client on the server and any information about the server at the client so now you will get lots of questions suppose ragu if we don't any information about the client on the server or if we don't save any information about the server on the client okay how does it it will possible that suppose i just logged into e-commerce application so here i'm just entering user id and password and if you click on continue if it is valid okay you will go to the the home page okay that means the first your the user validation is completed that is authentication is completed after that i'm just you you can add items to the cart and you can go for a purchase and you can do all kind of transactions okay in between we are doing lots of lots of http http request to the client and server right in between but the statement is http request is not going to save any information about the client and the server or any information about server on the client yes that is completely true but how it is happened how it is possible to implement this kind of architecture that once you got user as logged in until he signed out you can do some transaction you can send some more http request to the server right 
and even if you see if you just log into the any bank account suppose std std up sorry sd fc is there sorry okay sdfc is there okay right now it's time is uh 10 43 so i'm not sleeping <laughs> okay so hd hdfc web application is there so you have entered user id and password you have sent the request to the server right so server will validate whether this credentials are correct or wrong so once it is correct once the user id and password is valid okay it will allow you to do a transactions okay while you are doing transactions you are sending lots of requests to the server right if you have done 10 transactions that means you have already done 10 times you have sent a request to the uh, server from the client so if server is not going to remember anything about the client or if client is not going to remember anything about the server definitely for each and every request it should ask us to enter user id and password for each and every request right but it is not it is not showing that means what this statement is wrong whether http http is stateless right what we have discussed http request and response is not going to store any information about the client and the server and any information about the server and the client okay if it is true how it is possible to implement this kind of architecture or hdfc okay after some time maybe if your ideal maybe bank accounts or bank applications will show you like automatically it will go logged off logged out and it will ask you to enter credentials one more time so but how it is happening now how it is happening that is what the interesting story what the interesting story okay so here this yes http request and response is not going to save any data about the client on the server and any information about the server on the client why i am repeating these three or four times means that is very important to understand so, but what is happening internally now? So, whenever you send a request to the server, okay, with the user ID and password, this server, okay, either it will generate session ID, okay, session ID, or it will generate a token, okay, JWT token. Okay, normally, this HTTP request and response is not going to remember anything, but additionally we are implementing the logic that okay either we have two approaches one is session based approach or jwt token based approach so when we deal with a session based approach okay this server will generate a, a session id and it will store that information on the server and it will attach that session id observe carefully it will attach that session id to the response body because once you got the request and we will send a response right this http response is not going to http protocol is not going to remember anything but we are we are attaching we are attaching that session id in the form of cookie to in that response okay that is extra job what we are doing because http protocol is, is stateless and it is not going to remember anything Externally, we are implementing that architecture or logic to attach the session ID into the response body. Same thing, okay. Same thing. Of course, J. If you if you are using a JWT token, you will generate a JWT token and you will attach, you will send that information in the form of response body. So now you got some understanding right the basically this http protocol is not going to remember anything about the client or a server externally we should either generate a session id or a jwt token whatever it is and you should attach that in the response body and you should send it to the client so client will take that session id or a jwt token whether it will be stored in a cookie or a local storage doesn't matter so that you will remember right the client will remember that session id or a jwt token on the client machine of that particular server okay and on subsequent calls subsequent http request because once you log now just go back to the hdfc example so you have entered user id and password listen carefully you have entered user id and password you have sent a request to the server you have sent a request to the server 
Okay, this server is going to uh, generate a session ID and it will attach to the response and it will be sent to the, send it to the client so that it will be there in your browser. So on the second request, while you are doing the first transaction, you are not going to enter user ID and password, right? So maybe you, it will ask the OTP for extra level of security, okay? So it is not going to ask because Automatically, this browser is going to send that session ID which you have stored in the cookies in that browser. It will send it to the next request also. Naturally, this HTTP protocol is not going to remember anything, but we are adding an extra mechanism to generate a session ID and say, attaching it to the response body and sending it to the client. And the next time, okay, whenever you are doing the first transaction, it will read that session ID and it will send to the server in the form of HTTP body, okay, HTTP body. And the server will receive that information in that HTTP uh, request body and it will validate if it is good and it will allow you to do some transactions. Again, it will send a response. Again, if you are doing a third transaction, automatically the session ID which is there in the browser's memory it will attach to the http request body and it will send it to the server so here there are two types of approaches are there one is a session id and jwt token so now hopefully you understand little bit better even if you have a confusion don't worry don't worry don't worry i will i will i'm, I'm trying to simplify each and every topic so that by end of this series i will connect each and every dot to you and but if you didn't understand, just let me know in the comment section that uh, which one has a really confusing uh, to you so that I will focus on that topic again. So, and okay, we have, we forgot about the uh, TCP protocol, right? So here we have told you, we have discussed that HTTP is a stateless, but our TCP, okay, our TCP is a stateful, okay, state, what does it mean by stateful now? So if you see, once you establish a connection between a client and the server or any two devices, any two devices or any two servers, if you implement TCP protocol, for the first time, for, for the first time, when you send a request from a client to the server, so it will, the server will remember the information about the client and the server. And again, if you got the response in the same way, this client, this machine also will remember some information about the server. So even if you lost the connection, even if you lost the connection due to some internet failure or something, okay, no problem, no problem because this server remembers some information about this server and this server is going to remember some information about this server. In that situation, even if you lost the connection in between, once you establish the connection one more time, okay, once you establish the connection one more time, so automatically, automatically it will start transferring the data from client to server or a server to server. That's why, because this machine is going to remember the information about this machine here and this machine B is going to remember the information about machine A on machine B. That's why the TCP protocol is a stateful protocol. So it the it contrasts to HTTP protocol. HTTP protocol, even though if you go from here to here 10 times or 100 times, that HTTP protocol is not going to remember anything about a client or a server. It will forget everything. For that, we will implement the extra mechanism that session ID and a JWT token. Okay, that's what we are using. These are the two more two popular, popular and best approaches to implement authentication and authorization for the web applications especially. So that's what we are going to implement. So, but here we have a question, right? Okay, what does it mean by session based approach or what does it mean by JWT token based approach and in which situation this is useful, in which situation this is useful, in which situa situations this is bad in which situations this is bad okay but why we have chosen this jwt token and why we are implementing it okay again another confusion is there again this session id is a 
a stateful and token JW token is a st again stateless. Oh my God! Already we have come out of the simple confusion between HTTP protocol statelessness and uh, TCP protocol statefulness. Again, we are going to fall into another con kind of a confusion that session ID based architecture is a stateful architecture and JWT token implementation is a, again a stateless. Okay. Okay, no problem. I know little, little bit confusion is there, definitely. But just watch this video one or two times. And uh, still you, you can't understand. Okay, I will suggest you some good YouTube channel because I'm not really that much expert in these things. So I will, I will just do some uh, uh, Nazar, I forgot his name, but he's, he's, he's really, really awesome. Okay, I will, I, find, I found out easy. Um, HTTP versus TCP. Okay. Definitely you will find him. Step into Wix Studio. The best, uh, this is the best YouTube channel, but most I follow him. Nazir. Because there is a token here that represents me. Not a, if I send you this link, you can download it, obviously, because you have my token. But if I change this to something else, you get forbidden, right? That means the server is doing some sort of an authentication as well. And here we know what they are using. Look at this. You can tell so much information on the back end. It's like a stripping it naked. I love it. So, and you can also tell that the Nginx is the server here. And I love what they did here. I don't know if you noticed with the previous uh, uh, diff tooling sessions. If you don't do anything to this header, it will show the Nginx version, which I believe personally, I think it's bad. You never release what version you're using to the client because this could be exploited, right? Because there might be a bug in certain Nginx version and you can easily scan the web for bad Nginx versions and exploit that, right? If, if you don't have this information, you hide that information because the client doesn't really need to know the Nginx versions, right? Unless there is a feature that is explicitly in certain Nginx version. You don't really need to that. So any information about hackers, that gives hacker any tip, remove it effectively. That's a, just a best security um, practice. And uh, I'm not interested in, it's the same thing. We're just downloading the video. Again, I really think HTTP 1.1 for video is good for serial, like when downloading one video, maybe that's fine. But HTTP 2, I don't recommend, I think. But HTTP 3, if you're downloading a lot of concurrent requests sent at the same time, definitely that will save you connection times, 